Hi there, welcome back. Uh, now in this tutorial we're just going to take these links that we created last time, the dynamic links, and as you can see they go to a, an uncreated page and they send through the category ID of the category you're clicking on. We're going to use that little number there to create a dynamic link on the category page. So our, our template seems to be working fairly well. So what I'm going to do here using my original template is I'm just going to go file and save as and just create our index page which is our home page and also save as category. So this creates two copies of our template um, relatively um, identical. We're just going to change the category page however and just add a little bit of code at the top there uh, to check and see what category ID has been sent through. Now obviously before we do that we need to check and see if anything's been sent through. So I'm going to do a little if statement here and if um, somebody tries to access this page without coming through one of those links so that the category ID hasn't been set we're just going to redirect them back to the home page. It's just a way of avoiding any potential issues later. So the way to check that is if you put an exclamation mark and then the is set and then the thing we're checking is this get array and that looks like that dollar sign underscore get because it's an array we need the square brackets and the thing we're checking is this category ID. A couple of brackets close that off. Now if that is true, in other words there is no category ID we are going to do the following stuff inside those curly braces and the thing we're going to do is we're going to redirect them back to the home page. Now the way to do that I'm just going to use this header and in brackets and speech marks the location is going to be index.php. Notice the um, that whole thing's in speech marks there. So I'll just save that and go to my browser and I'm just going to try and access category.php and you notice it instantly redirects me to index. However if I go to that page by one of my links you notice it does stay on that page because this has been set. Alright so that's good. Next thing to do then is if, assuming now that's successful, a category ID has been set, let's run a query that will return um, some of those items. So I'm going to set up my variable stock as the prefix and then the suffix underscore SQL, that's the SQL, um, reverse the SQL code that will be run on the database. So I'll just put that in here and it's going to be quite a complicated one because I'm going to go ahead and select stuff from two tables. Uh, what I want to do is, actually I'll explain why, I want to go and get the obviously all the stock items belonging to the selected category ID but I think I'd also like to get the name of the category and display that at the top of the page. So because I'll be selecting from two tables I do need to um, specify what table each column is from. So from the stock table I'm going to grab the stock ID because I'll be using that for another dynamic link. I would also lock like the name of the stock item and I think I'll probably display the price. Um, I also want to get from the category table the name of the category. However this does create a little bit of a problem because you notice that we've now got two fields called name and if we go to display that on the web page it'll give us um, all sorts of confusion and I'm not quite sure what will happen actually but it will not work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an alias. So the category.name field will actually be renamed cat name. So when I want to display that, I'll just display it as cat name. So that's all the stuff I want to select. I'm going to get it from stock, because that's my primary table, but I'm also going to join on the category table. And the criteria for joining that, that table on is that I want to take the category ID of the stock item, so you see from the stock table the category ID, and it needs to match the category ID in the category table so that will get us the correct or corresponding category name. Um, now right now that query is going to return all items I need to filter that so it only returns the ones belonging to the category that was selected so I'm going to add a where uh, stock.category ID equals and again notice I've got the table as the prefix there you need to specify the table all the way through. Um, now the problem is we don't know what number that is, that's going to be the dynamic part of this um, query. So I'm just going to put speech marks here to end it off and then what I'm going to do is use the full stop to concatenate or join on 
whatever category ID has been set in that get array, like so. Now, um, before I do anything else, I just need to check that that worked. So let's just echo that that SQL that variable. Um, so we're just going to test that. Let's come back over here. If I click on skirts, you notice now I'm getting this long query being displayed across the top. Good news is the one's been picked up. If I copy that um, and come into my database, I'm just going to paste that in here. When I run it, fingers crossed, there we go, no errors, great. It's returned the four items belonging to the skirt category, the prices, but also the name of the category, which we can now display at the top of the page. So we know that query is going to work, fantastic. So I don't need that little debug code there anymore. Um, right, so the next step is to run it. So same prefix, stock underscore query equals mysqli underscore query, that's that uh, inbuilt PHP command. Remember there are two parameters, the first one is the uh, DB Connect, that's the um, thing we set up in our DB Connect file, that's the connection string there to our database. And then the second thing is the actual query itself, which is on the line above, that's that stock underscore SQL variable. So that will run it. Now all going well, that is going to run our code and bring back lots of results. Uh, and then we need to organize those into an associative array so that we can then display them on the on the screen. Now it is important though that we don't try and do the organization if there are no results to organize into an array because otherwise we'll get an error. So just above there if I move my cursor in front of that I'm just going to I can't see where my cursor is, there we go. Basically if that is going to work, so I'll turn that, so if that is all good we're going to do the following things. So I'm open and closing my curly braces. So if that thing there works, then and only then are we going to whoa, create this record set. So the same prefix, stock, rs for record set, and I'm going to use that inbuilt MySQLi fetch associative for an associative array, and the stuff that I'm organizing will be whatever is inside the stock query. There we go. So we're just going to save that and let's test it and see what happens. All going well, we get no, no errors. Fantastic. There we go. What happens if I change that category ID to one that does not exist in our database? Still no errors because it's not trying to organize an empty space because this thing has not returned anything. So that's all for today. What we're going to do next time then is just go over how we might display all those stock items down here in our main content area. So I'll see you then.